what's up guys it's your boy benny from flores bullies and welcome to this special special episode we got ready for you guys today it's called end of the year recap and i am um not alone as you can see i am with some top-notch breeders today and i am honored to be part of this um panel i mean i was asked to be part of it and i'm just super excited i'm not gonna waste too much of your time but we are gonna let them introduce themselves so you want to kick it off yo yo this is joe with powerhouse kennels charles mr beats live kennels justin with dead press frenchies and as you know, this is Corey Simon Says Frenchies. Once you see the face, you know the place. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure most of you guys either know one or all of them. And so we are got um, we got some special stuff for you guys today. We're going to go on a recap of all the dogs that have done some noise, who've made the most money, who've made the most productions in the French game. Most of you might agree. Some of y'all might disagree, but this is what it is for. You can go and comment and, you know, fight your case. And we are going to name a dog that we think is at the top. That's going to come towards the end. So you got to stay until the end to find out what dog we believe is at the top right now. But right now, let's go ahead and kick it off, guys, with um, trends. Me being a little bit outside of the French game, I've seen this whole trend with Fluffies and um, Isabellas. If you guys can kind of tell me what, what what's, what's going on, Joe, with, with, with this trend. Uh, well, I'll say the trend is uh, really the community uh, picked that. As far as like no one knew what, what was happening, it just kind of just took off. Uh, everybody started seeing them, and once they started seeing them, it caught everybody's attention with the fluffiness, you know. So the fluffy and the more exotic look kind of made everybody gravitated towards it. Now it's, you know, it's like spread like wildfire. So, yeah. So why, why do you guys think that the fluffiness caught on so much? Like, for example, you, how do you think that, why do you think it caught on so much? If everybody was so used to the structure, the mm. Frenchie had to look this certain way, all of a sudden this teddy bears come out and mm. everybody wants them. I think it's the look, the hair. It's not uh, the usual look of a Frenchie. So people gravitate towards it. People like things that are different, just like there are other things, uh, other dogs or other looks and dogs that we're going to talk about in this that mm. people are gravitating towards that, you know, they're out with the old and it's kind of moving into the new of what's, you know, controlling the market right, right. now. And the Isabella Press, what do you think? Um, why do you think that caught people's eyes? I mean, pretty much because it was new. It was never seen before. It was like, when it hit the market, everybody was like, oh, wow, what is it? It caught people's eyes. Because, you know, we were used to seeing the standard colors, some lilacs, some blues. Uh, I think even murals were starting to get a little bit more popular. But when that Isabella hit the market, everybody wanted to get their hands on it and make their version of it and do their thing with it. What was your intake on that, V12? I think, like, Isabella, like they said, basically, Isabella was just like the new shiny car that came out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was something different. It was... It wasn't your average Ferrari. It was like a soup, a souped up V sixteens for Ferrari or something <laughs> like that. The fluffy was just luxurious. Yeah, it, it's like you can go to the club and looking good, but you go to the club with that mint coat on. It's a whole another, yeah, whole another true. level. You I know? catch it. Yeah, it's an eye catcher. It was. It, it, it looks exotic, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the word everybody tries to run to, you know, when when they come to the game right now. It's like when that dude with that with a clean face comes out with that new beard, everybody like, ooh. <laughs> but we do have some dogs that we want to get into and talk to real quick. Um, I know one of the dogs that was making a lot of noise and that um, kind of been making noise for a while now is Gore. You wanna, if you guys wanna go ahead and start off with Gore, um, I'll let you, Prez, kick it off with Gore. Uh, Gore for me, first and foremost, I like the name. When you say the name, it it. it it does something to me. Uh, the look of the dog, that was like one of the first Isabella and Tans that had a look that I like. I mean, we've seen pictures of him, we've seen many videos of him. Uh, I think he's owned by the dude in Florida. Is it Gore's Frenchies or Gore? Gore? I don't know the, name of the mm -hmm. exact name of the page, but he looks good, man. He looks real good. And I think uh, that's like one of the best representations we've seen in the industry of uh, Isabella and Tan Frenchie. So I guess you guys, you guys are saying this is one of the first ones with this suit on that came out in the game? As far as I've seen and since I've been in this game, you know, Gore is actually one of those uh, those first Isabellas that I've seen in the game that made me go hard to study DNA because I'm like, mm -hmm. what is that? How do you make that? You know, I want to put something together like that, which made me DNA every dog I had in my house <laughs> and finding out I didn't even have that gene. Yeah. 
So it went, it made me go harder to figure out how to put the DNA together because we all know that, you know, to breed a dog that's two months, then you got an eight week whelp. Then, you know, you can probably add another two months, you know, just trying to, you know, get the dogs into a good home. So we're talking six months. So, you know, trying to put together a breeding like that, you know, it's, you don't want to waste time. Right. You know what I mean? Time right. is of the essence. So, you know, when it was, when it came to the Isabella and the first time I saw it go, I was like, I got to get this DNA down. I got to figure out how to make that dog. And go was that dog that forced me to get better with DNA. And, and people did, people did jump on it. And then all of a sudden we got um, Champagne Poppy. If powerhouse, if you want to get into into this guy, I pull him up. Yeah, yeah, quick. definitely. But uh, let, let's 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 take it a step back, man. Before we dive into all these these dope dogs that we talk about right now, uh, really the dog. Let's get back to Grizzly because Grizzly is the one that really set the tone for the trend that we're talking about because he was the first that we actually mm -hmm. saw that was visually fluffy or long hair, and he was actually the Rojo uh, dog that we're talking about right now. So he was one of the first dogs that came out that shocked the market and then he came out demanding uh uh 20k he, i think twenty thousand was his, big bag it was a stud for yeah. just to use him so and this is the boy right here that uh Flory just put on the screen so he really set the tone for the year i, I would say that as far as uh this year as far as the tone of the market the market really was based off this dog he was one of the pioneers to really put the bag in uh in conversation on these this breed yeah, well, I mean, he is a beautiful dog, and he definitely has structure that a lot of fluffies that I've seen personally in person do not have. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the color helps. I mean, it like puts the cherry on top. Well, you know the thing I mean? about him, he's like he's the first of the first. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you know, well, well, eighty out of a hundred people will say Grizzly is a huge dog. Mm -hmm. It's still another eighty out of another hundred people that's going to use him. And they right, have yeah. used him and is mm -hmm. going to continue to use him. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a very opinionated game, man. It's what you want. Do what you want. You know, and everything else pretty much doesn't even matter. Somebody's going to buy the puppies. I guarantee you that. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the numbers don't lie, right? Mm -hmm. If this dude's, like, you know, the stud fee is up there and he's just making money, I, I think that that's, I, that's all you got to say. I currently, right now, am trying to buy a dog off of Grizzly. And I say try because... Hey, I gotta take I gotta take those uh those baby steps before I get to that point. Right. Yeah. So. So um, like you were saying, Grizzly's a tool. He was the first of the first, so it's not gonna be perfect. But if you take it and you put your twist on it to make your version or your vision yeah. of how you want your yard or your program to look, that's one of the first tools that has the long hair gene and the rojo. It's not perfect, right. but it's a tool to help you build. You know what you're trying to build yeah i mean he's like he's pioneering right yeah. like like mm -hmm. anything you start yeah. any, with anything and it doesn't always start off perfect mm -hmm. for sure when we all started breeding it wasn't yeah. perfect off the bat right no, wasn't, yeah. <laughs> we all, no. you had to start perfecting it mm -hmm. with, with time so i think that's what that's what they've been doing with this guy and his bloodline and i mean that, they've definitely been doing a great job but um you want to jump on to uh champagne poppy now yeah so uh to talk to piggyback on grizzly uh like i said he's one of being the first one so champagne poppy uh, Gore, who we're talking about, uh, as well as Mr. Attitude. Mr. Attitude is, uh, if you actually can go to him. I know we're talking about uh, Grizzly as being one of the first visual fluffy Isabellas, but Grizzly, uh, Mr. Attitude was the one, the first new shade in Isabella. Tan, no fluffy. So this dog right here definitely set the tone for us in our market in a different way because it wasn't fluffy. Mm. Right. right. So it was literally something totally new. Yeah, that's a fact. Mr. Attitude, who want to who want to start off on him? Well, as far as Mr. Attitude, um, you know, we already spoke about Gore. Mr. Attitude was actually the first new shade that I actually saw. All right. So what new shade is? That's two copies, uh, two copies Rojo, two copies Blue, and two copies Cocoa. To to break it down for people that don't understand what new shade is. Now, as far as the, the new shade look, it, it was just like the eyes just popped out on you. It was like a nice golden look. You know, the, the way Mr. Attitude stood, 
You know what I mean? I was like, damn, I, I you know, I, I need a piece of that dog, but I couldn't have it. Didn't have the funds to actually get a to get the stud fee off of that dog, you know, because you know I'm just starting. Right. You know what I mean? I'm looking at what I have compared to Mr. Attitude uh, Gore. I'm like, man, uh, you know, if I you know if I would have started out the right way, if I would have had the right leadership getting into this game, I would have jumped right there and got uh, got uh, a stud off of that dog. Mm. You know what I mean? But you live and you learn. You know right. what I mean? But these are why these dogs are at where they're at and some people are at where they're at. You know what I mean? So let me ask let me ask this. Would you guys say Mr. Attitude was one of the one of the dogs that were the top of the year? As far as like one of the top new Shea Isabella dogs that was producing. I say DNA wise, yes. Year? This, this year. year. Well, it's a recap. Mr. Attitude Not this year? For yeah, new Shea, but in the new Shea category. The new Shea. Uh, no, nah, not for me. No, not, not for me. For me. Okay. I would say last I would say yes. Last year was DNA crazy. wise, because yeah. you know I did a lot of DNA studying. You know what I mean. So I had to, you know, really put the time in and buckle down to figure out how to get to these DNAs and these are dogs that I had to look at that were top notch in the game. Because you know I was, I had, I, you know, my first male that I bought was Bruno. Mm -hmm. He's a lilac and tan. So I'm like, how do I get from lilac and tan to new shade and tan? You know, so these are dogs I had to set up on my table and have the building blocks to say, all right, I got to put this dog together, this dog together. Maybe that might not work because this dog, you know, has this DNA and put them, put them together correctly as far as DNA. So for me, I would say yes. But you guys, you know, have a, a totally, different, totally different opinion. You know before, what I mean? Before we move on to the next dog, I would like to hear what you guys base it upon that you say this year it wasn't it. Uh, I'll go. So... I think he had his time before, you know, the the other ones that we're trying to group him in with. Mm -hmm. For me, for this year, uh, Isabella and Tan, I'm not going Gore. Gore was it for me. That if I had to pick, you know, you had him and next to Gore, I would pick Gore. I've seen, you know, the many angles of. I was gonna say Champagne Poppy, because I saw Poppy at the Alta Lee show in Texas. Mm -hmm. We went to. We saw him as a puppy. I mean, he's boned up. Yeah, like cool. his colors were so vibrant, so yeah. rich. I don't know if he has intensity gene, but it was eye catching. But at the time, he was a puppy, and as we all know, they still continue to grow and their bodies continue to change. So right. when I saw Gore, that was it. That was it for me. <laughs> so, all right. So we got we talking about Mr. Attitude. We talking about Champagne Poppy. We talking about Gore. What other new shade Isabella's that was putting in work this year? Give me mm -hmm. two more. Mm. Wow, that's a good question. Well, Nushe is a yeah. I mean, because for me, you talked about the two, you know, the two Isabellas, you know, because one's New Shade and one is Isabella. Okay. You know what I mean? So for me, oh, you know, <laughs> that, that that made an impact, yeah. that did something great for the industry as a whole. I, Gore, him, Poppy, Teddy? Teddy, Not Teddy, Teddy, too new. Teddy Graham. But Teddy made an impact, bro. When he re when he opened Teddy up, mm -hmm. man, the the internet went crazy. Lock ins out the ass. Him a lot, though. Mm -hmm. Teddy, hey, Teddy, shout out to Freedom Frenchies. So, yeah, for so real. So the are not over with yet. Okay. So respectfully, I think you gotta say Ric Flair too. Ric Flair. Okay. Yes. Who who owns Ric Flair? That's um my man's Alex Alex Lee. Uh, over at where? Frenchy World. Oh, Frenchy World, New York. Yeah. I never but I say respectfully, you know, because Teddy, when Teddy came in, Teddy came in like, ah, I'm here. Yeah, you yeah. Know, the, the, the marketing behind yeah. Teddy. Yeah, with the, the, the Teddy Graham. The name Teddy, Teddy Graham. Teddy, uh, like, yeah. everybody knows Teddy Graham. So if you mm -hmm. don't know what Teddy Grahams are, Graham Crackers, or your little L's, you lost. Too young. You lost. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me, the marketing, <laughs> the name, and the look of the dog, it's a it's a visual fluffy, so like a little bear, even though you know it's a Frenchie. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. got the long hair, it's got the nice colors, it's got the, you know, the body, the, the face. So it's just what, a pretty dog. What yes. other new shade full flip? We got Elon Musk is out there. You got um Bolo, who's out there. But what other new shade full fluffies is out there? Well, those two haven't made an impact yet. Yeah, they just came. But what other ones? I want to say... I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of my working, but to to say to put them in the end of the year recap, I don't think they make the list yet. Yeah. I think they have a lot of work to do going mm -hmm. forward, but for this uh, year, this 2022 uh, end of the recap, I don't think they'll I make this seen, list. I haven't seen, you know, I don't really even think too deep into the new say stuff. Yeah, but I haven't seen too many more. Is my mm -hmm. whole point. It's not a lot out there still. Mm -hmm. I think people are 
more people getting their hands on their DNA now, especially mm-hmm. this year. So they're still, you know, in the lab, mixing and cooking and, and doing their thing. So I think it's going to be something coming out pretty soon. Yeah. But I saw Bolo as a puppy. Um, shout out to I Love Frenchies. I don't know how to pronounce we it. We Love Frenchies. We Love Frenchies. Uh, he's a good-looking dog. Beautiful dog, man. When I saw him, he, like he glowed. That's mm-hmm. how bright his, his colors were. He, he's a sleeper. Yeah. Mm. I've been... I've been Sucking that dog out since they got that dog in their hands. Mm. He's the sleeper. Watch what I tell you. He in Georgia. He's special. We might be talking about him next year then. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So we definitely mm. might be. Uh, he might be a, a top <laughs> contender. So we all gonna be on the lookout for him. But let's let's take it a, a let's take it a step further because when the fluffies came out and the, the craze did what it did, I think once they hit a year old, a lot of people start to uh, go the fluffy carrier route. You know, and the reason being, a lot of people said that the fluffy carriers had a little bit more uh, confirmation, a little bit more structure. I heard uh, that. That's a fact. I heard a lot that. smaller, a lot mm-hmm. more compactor. Uh, so, this brings me to say, who were the top fluffy carriers this year? Oh, man. I would say I, Champagne Poppy. I got to give it to Maui. I mean, I know we know Maui's been, you know, doing his things yeah. for a minute, but he is a fluffy carrier. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ma- Maui, the, you know, the way they run their program, the stuff they do, that's that's just my personal opinion. But I also really, really like, is it Jägermeister not a fluffy carrier? No. No, not Jägermeister. Uh, who's another fluffy carrier? Yeah, man, everybody who knows uh, dogs knows that that program. So so Maui, you, you got, are you guys saying that he was one of the top uh, fluffy carrier producers? Yeah, um, one of the top. Yeah, one of the top. top. Yeah. Like so, has what a, was those two options? It was Maui and who else? No, who I'm asking you, you guys. guys like, no, who? Okay, what was the other guy you said? The other dog? I said so he, he was Poppy. Poppy. You said Poppy. Maui, Champagne Poppy. Champagne Poppy. Yeah. What other fluffy carriers? Well, I mean, respectfully, with all due respect to all the other counts out there, have y'all heard of another dog or seen another dog on social media more than Maui? No. Mm-hmm. You know, Not I mean, besides uh, so some OG dogs. It, it, it's never... Yo, I've only been around maybe three years, probably going on foot poor, but mm-hmm. I've never heard a dog mention as much as Mel. Mm-hmm. So that that right there tells you exactly what's going on. Now that could just be marketing. Mm. It could be a it could be A one marketing. But you can't take nothing away from the marketing, you know, as it as it stands with the dog. They go yeah. hand in hand. Yeah. Okay. That's a fact. I done heard Maui name so much I started calling the breeder Maui. But it's <laughs> <laughs> But shout out to uh, shout out to Justin Crawford though. Hey, you shout know, out to Justin Crawford. So yeah, man, that's uh, hey man, so you telling me Maui is the only uh, fluffy carrier that that was doing this thing that went crazy? That yeah. went crazy at that yes. level. Yeah. Yeah. At, at that level, level. especially the market. Well, I've mean, seen some crazy. What, mar- crazy. Okay, what what about his? Oh, so name some of his top sons that's that's really putting that work. They 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 hold that name to. Who is his top son? HBK. Yeah. Okay. Who else? HBK. Uh, who else? Uh, what's the? Is it Cowabunga? Yeah. yeah. Cowabunga. Yeah. Cowabunga. Uh, is son? That's yeah. Son. They uh, said it's uh, two times uh, Maui, I believe. Dang. Two times Maui. Uh, you got a uh, heartbreak kid. Yeah. You got um, what's the guy down in Miami? Toy Toy Bulls. Michael Jordan. Yeah, Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Michael Jordan. That's an offspring in Maui as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. Hey, we just learning yeah. everything today, man. And, and, that goes it. Maui's and, it. And Michael, <laughs> Michael Jordan was a whole spectacle in his own. Yeah. And like. That's a fact. If you in a dog game and you want to remain in a dog game and you're not paying attention to their marketing, yeah. you are crazy. Seriously. They have the blueprint of marketing down to a ridiculous science. Mm-hmm. And I, that's something that I, I could never take away from that camp. Yeah, He's that's a one fact. of those camps. Mm, that's a fact. Yeah, marketing is definitely like a big thing, man, especially like in, I mean, in any business, right? But mm-hmm. you can definitely tell when some of these people actually like invest money into the marketing. Yeah, and be creative. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, very creative. You, you, you don't, don't. It's different. Like, you, know, you just do something different than what everybody else is doing. Yeah. yeah. And they're definitely doing it. I don't want to get too far off the subject matter, but, you know, yeah. how many how many people you know that got great dogs, beautiful dogs, and can't move them or not getting no studs? Mm-hmm. Because they marketing sucks. Yeah, that's right. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, well, I, won't, I won't say it sucks. Let's not say that because we the, all it's not to the capacity of this. But yeah, we I'm all right there, start dude. somewhere. Yeah. We all start somewhere because I was nowhere near where I'm at right now. But from just a lot of studying and researching and constantly uh, pushing myself to 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 set new goals and limits for myself, I've mm-hmm. gotten better over the years. Mm-hmm. So, and but when I first started. 
trash. So this is, oh, yeah. this, is, this is how I motivate myself. Yeah. I look at what they got going on, and I go look at what I got going on. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, a lot of people say I got great marketing skills. Mm-hmm. But I look at theirs, and I look at mine, and I say mine sucks. Mm-hmm. I don't even put myself anywhere on the plateau of these people because I'm, I'm trying to keep myself motivated to move forward. Mm. I yeah. haven't done enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm With, just a name right now. Yeah, like, like you know, I said, when you say he look at their stuff, like literally before before I would do a, a post or a theme or a reel for my litters, I would go look at the people I like, like uh, Freedom Frenchies, Maui, uh, Go Viral. I would see how they post mm. and study their stuff and put my own little twist on it. So you would say that those people... Uh, inspire and motivate you to yeah, man, get the, outside the, the box the high with quality your creativity. Pictures, the high quality pictures mm-hmm. using not just you know your camera phone but yes. actually the person, actual cameraman. Look at this picture. Yeah, the whole videos. production behind it. You got you got to get it, man. Like mm. you can't just put a dog on top of some fake grass on top of a cage somewhere and click. Yeah, this is got your angles. Book your photographer. Book your video man. That's get creative. Right. Come up with a creative name. Something catchy. Come up with a creative theme. Like. Get in your box. I mean, find some inspiration or something. If you find inspiration by looking at other breeders who inspire you, and you want to, at one day, aspire to be at their level, study it. Study it. It's right there in front of you. They're not going to give it to you for free. It's, it's not you a player, study it. It's not a player in the NBA. Not one player in the NBA, old, new, or whatever, that have, hasn't gone and watched the Michael Jordan video. Mm. Saying the last dance, dance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the last dance. That's what it is. Last dance. Kobe Bryant. Yeah, no, Kobe, right Kobe, yeah, last dance. Yeah, last dance. Next week. I want to go on to the next dog, but Kobe Bryant would never be Kobe Bryant without Michael Jordan. Yeah, mm. yeah. It was yeah, yeah that's sure. He had to emulate him. You know, yeah. just just to piggyback on what Charles was saying, because you know he said that hey, some people got great dogs, but you know their marketing is not up to par. You know what I mean? Just like you know, I was at Charles' show, Bully Mansion, and. I saw some people with some great dogs, but I ain't never seen their dog before. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if you have, if you think that you have a great dog, or people have been telling you your dog looks good, you know, aspire to market your 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 camp like these folks do. I went, I'm not gonna say you know sit there and bite their whole style, but at least you know look at what they're doing. You know, get some pointers, put yourself a team together. You know, whether it be like Justin said, a, a cameraman, you know, a videographer. Yo, um, if you need to hire your mama just to sit there and hold a dog, <laughs> hire your mama sit there and hold a dog. If your mama know how to hold a dog and she got that mom look, mm-hmm. do it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But at least put the production together, put the time into your camp to get it to where you need it to be. Because I'm tired of seeing people with great looking dogs, but I ain't never seen them before. Mm-hmm. Get out there, advertise your camp, show the people what you got. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's basically. I mean, for example, I saw I saw Joe do a photo shoot with his puppies. He dressed them up. Yeah. That day, I went to um, PetSmart and bought some outfits for mm-hmm. Halloween photo shoot. Right oh, that yeah. day, man. Okay. man. I was like, I need to do something like this. Yeah. Of just regular Don't let Joe fool you, though. That's Miss Joe doing all of that. Joe's the <laughs> face. Don't let Joe hey. fool you. That's Miss Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Powerhouse Killer. She <laughs> definitely do all that work. She, she do a lot of... Shout out Miss Powerhouse. Shout, shout out to all the background. The couples, the family members. Shout out to everybody that helped. Yeah, but matter of fact, I want to, since we're talking about carriers, carriers were, were uh, what a lot of people are, are going towards. Mm-hmm. So since we were talking about the fluffy carriers, what about the testable carriers? Because they played a major role, and there was some that did their thing as well this year. Mm-hmm. So who would be those uh, testable carriers to you guys? Like, throw a couple names out Microsoft. there. Microsoft. Okay. Microsoft. No, no, what about just straight t- testable? No fluffy. Oh, just straight testable. Yeah, fluffy. Microsoft is a visual fluffy. Mm-hmm. Talking about straight testable. Man, I couldn't even. It been so yeah, long. It's, it's like, been so it's, long. Hard, it's, like it's, it's hard to say it. because it, it, it feels like you can't have a dog that carries testable without them carrying fluffy. Yeah, they mm-hmm. them like it. It's hard <laughs> to find them without it. You know what I mean? I'll say one, that and is. I'll say one, and they, they really been doing something that. I would say they probably got the best testable carry out in the Jägermeister. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jägermeister. I didn't know he carried testable. From, yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's, that's Gore's dad. That's Gore's dad. I didn't know that. Uh, Bakerfield. Shout out Baker. Yep. That's uh, that's his program. Mm-hmm. Pull it up. Make sure. I don't want to. Oh, okay. Baker. Baker Blue Frenchies, man. Shout out to Baker Blue Frenchies. You, you guys, I would say to me, he was probably had the most impact as far as testable carriers. He produced Gore. Uh, as we all know, Gore is what we was talking about earlier about the new shades. Yeah. Uh, so he's produced that, and he's he's going to do more things. So he's one me. I would say he's probably mm-hmm. the top for testable carriers. That's just my opinion, though. 
So when we say that these dogs that we're mentioning are true, the true definition of a stud because they're producing studs. Uh, yeah, that's I think if we're if we're talking about yeah. Maui, if we're yeah. talking about people that they're 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 the studs studs are having studs yeah. and producing studs. Jägermeister. They, they are the ultimate stud. Yeah, Jägermeister and Gorge yeah. duos. Oh, yeah. I would say that because they yeah. both are in their prime right now together. That's a father and son duo. That's that's you know hitting it. Yeah, that's hitting the ground. So yeah. I would say yeah, he would be a uh, top. So a little bit from from, from from an outsider, would you say for people that you know are, are just kind of getting into the breeding game? Would it be a red flag if somebody is charging this much for a stud and you don't know not one son off that stud putting in work? Would you be like, would you, as an experienced breeder, prefer to not breed to that stud since he's really not producing anything? Uh, well, you know, I'm not going to tell. Whoa, 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 whoa. Charles, <laughs> you start. We're going to go down the road. Charles, not, you start not, with that. Not me at all. Um, because I, I know when I'm, I'm paying for a dog, I'm paying for the DNA. Mm -hmm. I'm paying for the structure. You know, I'm paying, I could be paying for something new. It could be the first structurally looking good, full pink, fluffy, or something like that, they want 20 grand for it. You don't have no other puppies on the ground. Semen is going crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. So you could be just playing for the DNA. You might not you might not be paying for the for the offspring at all mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. As far as studs go. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a fact. It depends on how that, that stud fits into my vision. Like I'm not worried about what somebody else do with his offspring. If I know I can do something with it in my program, I'm gonna use it. That's a fact. Me personally, I'm not gonna tell somebody what to charge for their dog. You yeah. know, if you're charging a hundred grand, that's you. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna buy. Right. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I feel like there there is no perfect friendship. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You have to pick the dog that fits your program, just piggybacking off of what Justin just said. You know, that dog, you know, if the dog has large ears but has a great body, hey, you know, I can look past the ears, but I can take that body. If the dog, you know, carries one copy Tespo and one copy Cocoa, shoot, my, my female, she has this, she has that, so I can work with that. So I'm not going to tell nobody what to charge for their dog, but if it's within my price range and I can work with it, I'm going to take it. Yeah. And I'm going to try it. I'm a risk taker. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big risk taker when it comes to, you know, getting in the lab and putting dogs together, you know, because a lot of these dogs were came on the scene just by somebody taking a risk. Somebody had to take the risk this is to put, true. These dogs on the, put these dogs on the floor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't be scared to take a risk. You know what I mean? So I, I would much rather try and fail than mm -hmm. to not have tried at all. Mm -hmm. Than to sit there and live with regrets. Like, man, I should have put them two dogs together. But not me. I'm putting them together. <laughs> hey, if I come out with a deaf dog, cool. You know what I mean? Then, you know, I know, hey, that's not going to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? We got to where we are in society by scientists putting a bunch of stuff together that didn't work to find something that did work. You know what I mean? But so I'm not going to sit here and keep on going. Look ahead, though. So you're saying the colors that are now the top craze mm -hmm. were someone taking a chance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Has and to. that would be, and I want to just shout out this guy. Uh, I know there's a lot of controversy around his name, but he is one of those guys that you're talking about, that, that mad scientist that's, just, that's mm -hmm. doing it, that's mm -hmm. trialing there, right? And that's uh, Diego. So yeah. Designer Bull Essex. Shout out you guys and your whole camp, your whole, program, your whole program over at Across the Pond. Shout out Diego, Archie, the whole people across the pond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but he is that that person in our community, in the uh, in the in our community that is pushing the envelope, mm -hmm. that are taking chances and putting out that new thing. For like you said, mm. if you if it's not if it hasn't been created. It's hard to say, oh, I'm not going to use it. Well, right. it's never been out, so mm -hmm. you, someone has to take a chance. Exactly. To make dogs like this, or dogs that look like this, that have that DNA to make that next level dog. Uh, you know what I mean? So I definitely think uh, Diego them are pushing the envelope every year. They've been doing it consecutively since, mm -hmm. you know, I've been made aware of their program. Yes. And, you know, they brought us, I think they brought us. Merle. They brought us Merle's. Mm -hmm. They brought us. Fluffies. Fluffies. Course. They brought us. Cool. Uh, testable, new, sh new shade, mm -hmm. husky coys, husky coys. So they brought they brought all that from one person taking a chance, and now the the, the whole community is reaping the benefits off that one person taking a chance. So I agree with you, Corey, on that. Yeah. You got it. You can't be scared. Yeah. You know, yeah. not you can't be scared. So in conclusion, you guys would still breed to that dog, but I guess going back to what we were talking about, you couldn't call a stud a top stud if he doesn't have stud offsprings. At the end of the day. I would say top offspring. Yeah, doing, of course. Is, doing is, 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 yeah, that what, is that what makes a stud a top stud, stud though? To me, yes. If he's constantly throwing a consistent look and that consistent look of his offspring is 
at a certain caliber and those offsprings of him, for example. Glory is doing his thing, not at a lower level, at an either equal or a higher. So it has to be it has to be some kind of criteria to it. Right. It can't just be like, oh yeah, it's a dog and I bring another dog. You don't forget the yeah. bitch. The do bitch you, counts too. Do, do you know sure. the other than Gore? Uh, Off of him? Yeah. That's going crazy. Mm. Like he like he said, they marketing, they good ass dogs, they good looking dogs, but people ain't posting them. Mm-hmm. I've seen some of his productions. So we're basing this off of Gore. Just Gore then. I think, so, we're basing it off of influence. Influence mm-hmm. in the community. Dogs that 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 influence the whole community. You, you heard about them in, on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. You heard about them up, up north. Mm-hmm. You heard them down in the South. You heard them about the Midwest. That's what we're basing it off of. As far as one, quality. Mm-hmm. Quality. Yeah. We're talking about a testable. Testable being Rojo. Mm-hmm. That's probably one of the better looking uh, testable carriers out that I've seen. That's what I'm basing it off of. And his production. When we talk about production and how they're they're uh, working, if your sons, if, if a stud produce offsprings, right, and they're not working like him, that means that that stud is not producing other studs that can work just like him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you can produce dogs, but if their sons, their offspring is not working just like them, then I feel like they're not a top stud. Yeah, if they're, yeah. they're not producing they're, somebody they're, like they're, that. Their, their they're offspring should be produced a better version. Just working yeah. just as high as they are. How many, um, man, how many studs, like big studs, actually have offsprings that go crazy? Because, okay, like like for example, uh, let's run it back to, uh, to, to Maui. Mm-hmm. Maui's marketing is so crazy that everybody wants to go to Maui. Mm-hmm. But... Does that that doesn't like constitute them having getting a good stud and knowing how to market that stud, you know? Cause cause Jagermeister, I'm pretty sure he got 50, 50 to hundred other good studs out there. But mm-hmm. we've only heard of Gore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So like I don't I just don't really think that makes a dog a great a great stud because he has one offspring that we all know of that's going mm. nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's just the consistency and the look. To me, that probably because, more than anything. Because if I buy a dog, let's say you have you know the top dog right now, and I breed to your dog. But what if I don't want to breed? What if I just want to keep the puppy as mm-hmm. a pet? Yeah. I might mm-hmm. have the best dog in the world, but it's just, it's just my pet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. At my new job, I, I saw this little brindle dog. His name is Biggie. To me, one of the best structured fringes I've ever seen. The, the the owner just has him there just laying down all day mm-hmm. she doesn't care about shows she doesn't care about breeding nothing mm-hmm. and I put, put my life on it that dog could break it if he wanted to but I feel like mm-hmm. that's 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 a big factor some people just don't yeah, want to breed some people yeah. don't care about breeding they just really want a nice litter you know they mm-hmm. want to be able to say hey I created a nice litter and that's all that matters some, some people just want to experience like Charles said yeah. like, having a litter like hey I'm a hobby breeder I'm not trying to get a career out of it I just want to do it to give my friends and family some pups and because yeah. all of us at this table, I don't know if, I don't know if you had any litters yet. I mean any any stud any situations yet, but all of us at this table has had a plethora of uh breedings. Mm-hmm. But I can't tell you a stud off of any of our breedings mm-hmm. that's going crazy. Mm-hmm. And we all sure. might have collectively 500, 600, 600 puppies on the ground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That don't mean that your stud is not a top stud. Right. And the majority of the people I sell to are not breeders. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I sell to mostly just families. Yeah. And there's people out there that I've, that send me updates and I'm like, bro, you need to breed this dog. Like, nah, I ain't interested in breeding. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I wish they would because I put my name out there. You know what I'm saying? But, well, some people don't, you know, some people get a dog not based upon a dog. They get dog based upon you because they like your personality. That's a big thing. You get That's what I'm true. saying? So I have customers that deal with me just based upon my personality. Mm. My dog is second. Like, hey, Corey, I like, the way, I like the way you explain things. You take your time. You know, you're always available when I call you. You know, secondly, I like Bruno. Secondly, I like Blue Moon, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you can have the greatest dog. And actually, I heard, it's, it's funny, I heard uh, Celebrity Kendall say this in one of his posts. You can have the greatest dog, but you can have a crappy attitude. Mm. Mm. That's, it. That's it. Yeah, the breeders. Are Shout out Celebrity off, Kennels, man. man. Shout out to Celebrity Kennels. A lot of people will deal with you because it's you. Yeah. Because they like your vibe. They yeah. like the people you keep yourself around. Mm. You know, I could be a great person, but if I got 
four a holes around me, mm-hmm. you know, what's the chances I'm just putting on the front? Hey, yeah. You know, like you gotta. So it, it's just like the just like the structure conversation. It's all opinionated. Mm-hmm. Top studs is opinionated. This is mm-hmm. my opinion. Okay, I, I like that. Well, with that being said, <laughs> let's take it back to some OG blood then. So if we talk about this is based off uh-huh. opinions, let's talk about people that, that built a program that has built a big following and it is using the traditional colors. Blue Brindle, you know what I mean? Grinch, Dr. Seuss. They've been around, what, since the early 2000s? Mm-hmm. Both of those dogs... Have neither one of none of these uh, DNA components that we're talking about right now. These dogs right here are some of the the, the earlier colors. What we all love is the blue brindles. Everybody can everybody can see a blue somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see a blue somewhere. You get oh what what is that with those big ears? Oh that's a blue that's a blue Frenchie. That's so this right here. So well, if we're not mean, talking about if we're not talking about opinions. Let's talk about what somebody built and their brand right now is holding value. OCK Rick. Mm. I don't know, and I'm not taking nothing away from nobody, but OCK Rick, man, I don't even know a dog off his program, but I can look at his page and see all the looks is consistent, mm-hmm. all his yeah. dogs are structurally, That's a fact. even just in my opinion, they structurally perfect, you know what I mean, like, and he's a great individual, mm. and I know this because there's some things going on, but yes, OCK Rick. Mm. So... Okay, so we're saying OCK Rick, and that's the Dr. Seuss bloodline, right? Mm-hmm. Shout out to OCK Rick uh, for being one of those uh, that make this list. And it, being yeah. the pioneers of the one game of the for us, yeah. being one of the, you know, being one of the first ones to to breed for color, and not you know setting the tone for an actual program. So shout out to, to the whole Dr. Seuss bloodline, and also Grinch. Shout out to uh, Mr. Grinch, uh, owner Bayline, Bayline Bullies, man. I think everybody at this table can say that we know about this brand right here. We may not yeah. know about a lot of other DNA mm-hmm. and color, mm-hmm. but we can't say those mm-hmm. two names are some of the, the the pillars in our game that's kind of that's been doing their thing for a minute. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, when I first started doing my research to get into breeding Frenchies, I just typed on Google French Bulldogs. That's the first name that popped up. That was a picture. <laughs> and everything else about Frenchies, man. Like, OCK Cali Rick, like... Charles said, he's a great dude. Like, you know how you got, like, uh, people you look up to. And, like, oh, man, if I DM, they might not respond back. Mm-hmm. Or they might not, you know, like my, you know, because I tagged them or whatever. I actually DM'd him. And we had a full conversation. And come to find out, I had this dog's father in one of my past dog's pedigree. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, man. I said, so that means something. He said, yeah. He said, we built something so it can carry on for generations and it and it has. Mm. What they're doing is going to impact the dog community for generations. Even if, like, I think one of them did pass. I'm not sure which one. I might be incorrect. I think uh, Dr. Seuss is the one that's no longer here. But, but they got strong. Before he left, they have frozen before sand. he, you know, before he, you know, passed on to the to dog heaven, uh, I think he oh, had over 400 him. puppies on ground. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And that, that takes me to, you know, what you were saying about as far as, like, what makes a top dog or a top stud. Is it production or, you know, influence? Would you say he would be one, O.C. Calorick would be? 400 puppies? Over 400 puppies before he passed, before he well, passed you know, on. A lot of people think that the numbers don't matter. Mm. And I'm not a lot of people, though. I'm mm. sorry. But I would say yes. Mm. I would say yes. Um, not even just the dog. But the animal behind them, the machine behind them, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and in essence, the camp really is working for the dog. The dog not working for the camp. Mm-hmm. Mm, so, I like that. I like how you put it. So what, say that again for us, Charles. I don't even remember what I said. He said. <laughs> 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 I said it. I said it. Charles is live mode. Charles is live mode. I said in essence. Charles the hooker. In essence, I didn't want to hook or But I said in essence, in essence, the camp is working for the dog. The dog's not working for the camp. You okay, so so the dog is just half of the of the business. Yeah, the other half the dog, is the dog person behind 80%. it. So the dog is eighty five percent. The other fifteen percent is the person that, behind. That, I wouldn't say that, so. that kills the market. I would say fifty fifty. Yeah, it's fifty fifty because the dog. If you have if you have a quality dog, that sets that sets you apart from everybody else. 
But then if you have a a, a, a program with it, man, this is why we're talking about what we're talking about right yeah. now. Because this is a quality dog. But if he didn't take his time or do his due diligence to promote the dog or put the marketing behind it, you know, we would not be sitting here talking about this dog I'm where a, we I'm are. A, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to uh, go back on what I'm about to say at the same time. How many people you know have, in your opinion, in your opinion, it might be horrible dogs, but they marketing so great that the dog's winning, you know? Who? Put a name on it. I'm not. Mm-mm. But on nah, the, we on ain't the, doing that on, here. On, this is all positivity. On the, but on the flip yeah. side, mm-hmm. but on the flip side, what people need to understand is the things that you don't like is what you don't like. Yeah, it's a personal. There's a million opinion. other people that like. It's a friendship for everybody. Like. Mm-hmm. You know, so some people dog, like beef, some people like tails, some people like long, whatever they like. Yeah, for sure. And I'm not. Yeah, that's a we fact. see that. We see that like in the bullet community too. That's I mean, fact. like there, there's dogs out there that I personally would never breed to if they paid me to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I mean, they're they're bringing in money like crazy because mm-hmm. their marketing is just out of the world, you know. Market. So yeah, that that is a big thing. Definitely. Marketing like. matters, man. Look at rap music. You know, there's a bunch of stuff that come on the radio. What is, why is this on the radio? It's so trash. You know what I mean? But it is up there, number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the radio is a tool. And the radio is going to push that one song so much, you don't have no choice but to learn the words. You're going to like it. You're going to yeah. you like it. You hear it all day. Yeah, so, it goes. so how do you feel about them charging double whatever the stud fee is to breed to double up on the bloodline? I love it. it because, keeps, wait, 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 wait. Let me go a little step further. I'm so because that's something that they're doing now with their to preserve their bloodline. Mm-hmm. If you want to uh, double up... You have to double the price. So if the stud fee price is just say on average five k, mm-hmm. they're saying you got to pay ten k to breed to that bloodline to double up on it. Yeah. How y'all feel about that? Man, Do y'all feel great. like they? You feel like the that they that 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 that's okay, or you feel like nah, what? Feel it's okay. Go ahead, Florence. He was saying it's okay. We gonna go yeah. around. Yeah, we'll I think it's it's fine because I think that makes it exclusive. You know, nice. I feel like a lot mm-hmm. of breeders out here just breeding to anything, to wherever, and your bloodline is no longer exclusive. I, I like when a bloodline stays exclusive, so if I have a bloodline that's working and somebody wants to double up on it, pay for it. Mm-hmm. You know that's what I'm saying? Fact. And you're going to pay for it, and you're going to pay for something that only you have. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people have it. So, yeah. I mean, I, personally, I love it. That's mm-hmm. a fact. Mm-hmm. So, Charles, what you got? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> How you feel about it? You like it? You don't like I, it? I mean, to be honest with you, I don't care. You know what I mean? Because I'm not, I'm not the person that's trying to do that. I don't have anything in my, in my situation that I mm-hmm. want to do that with mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just like variations of, of different stuff, man. So mm-hmm. I, that's not, that's just not my aim at all. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and some people might call it pocket watching when well, people do that, and the people don't agree with it or whatever. But I don't care. Like, you know, if you like it, I love it. I like it. I love it. Like I was saying earlier, uh, preservation, like you said, and not only that, it um, it prevents you from having to worry about oversaturation of a perfect machine or structured animal that you put a like a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears into. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what it took to make this dog. I know it's it's rumored to come from La Marina, over in the UK. La Marina Dell. She had a hand in you know producing them. Um, Shout out Lamar and Dale. Shout out to her. You know, so I don't want to get watered down. It's a lot of people that claim they got Dr. Seuss and Grinch blood. Mm. And when I see it, I'm like, mm, that, that, that's what I'm talking what kind, about. What kind of blood you got? You so, got, you're missing some components of that. So, would you say if it don't look like these two dogs, that it's not Grinch? It's blood? not. And they do certifications, right? Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. Send the dog that's in. A picture of the dog and the DNA, get your dog certified. So, Nurse certification. So it's, not it's in the pedigree, but they're not a Grinch. Is what you're saying, basically. No, I think, you know, as long as it's in the pedigree. He has, think, he has a requirement. It's requirement. Yeah. It has to be certain yeah. names on the pedigree. It has, I mean, be, it has to be these certain names on the pedigree. Mm. And it had, the dog has to have certain looks, yeah. mm-hmm. characteristics to make it that exclusive bloodline. Yeah. To be certified. Oh, I think that's what I, I've read or saw. Go ahead, look, talk to a couple people. Yeah, because 100 people could walk outside, walk by outside with 100 Frenchies, but we're going to know immediately what came from this dog because they have such a distinct look. Mm-hmm. And, uh, as far as doubling up on the bloodline, me as a businessman, I think it's genius. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, uh, hey, if you, you want to double up on mine, hey, I, you're going to you're gonna have to pay to play. You know, yeah. you got to pay to be the boss. If it took me four or five generations to make this specific look, and you want to come back and double up mm-hmm. on it, you got to pay. 
I, I had this vision and I made it. Yeah. You liked it because you either bred one of my dogs or you purchased one. So I'm not finna water it down and mm-hmm. cut my prices and let you go just fuck it up. Yeah, you can do it. You like a bag yeah. of Doritos? You want to go get another one? You got to pay for it. That was the first yeah. it ain't word. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> first bad. word of the evening. Oh, I got man. About no, it. It's a so, podcast. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to say this. Uh, Gretch, Mr. Gretch from Bayline Bullies and Dr. Seuss from OC Cali Rick. Uh, both of those guys, those are the OG bloodlines. So they made our list, their end of the year recap list for being some of the the original bloodline, being some of the original programs that's still doing it to this day and competing with the current market. They're they're doing it to this day right now, competing with the current. With they don't, fact. and that and that's that to me that equates them to be on our end of the year recap of yeah. uh, this year, 2022. Yeah, they're definitely doing their thing. You know, when I came to the game, you know, I wasn't really into the you know the the Dr. Zeus and, you know, the, the Grinches and things like that. But I like to look at them, but it wasn't it wasn't the type of dog I wanted to bring into my program. You know what I mean? But they're great to look at, but, you know, so, it wasn't the Frenchie I was looking for. So right? I got a question, though. Um, I don't know if y'all been paying attention to what's been going on lately with Grinches and Fluffies, but can a Fluffy be considered a Grinch? Just, no. it's a, this is, this is, I just don't. That's um, a, I'm not, that, taking, I'm not hey, taking a side what, what I mean. Like, like it, they got gluffies. gluffies. I heard about yeah. it. I seen one. Okay. Just one out. Grinches and fluffies. If it's got the look, yeah, yeah, we all know. And they want to certify it. Those people do what they want. That's their business. That's it. They got the look. I've seen one. I've okay. seen. I, I forgot who posted, but I've seen it. If it has that look, that signature. I look, think utmost, utmost Frenchies. Yeah, that's what utmost, man. utmost Frenchies. Shout out to utmost Frenchies. Mm-hmm. They uh, they working on that, uh, bringing that that original OG bloodline to the to the, the to the presence. Fluffy. To the present uh, game, and that's fluffy. So at the end of the day, I feel like some people are preservers, and some people are creators. Where you know they're not really, they're not scared to take a chance, yeah. take a risk. Yeah, I think this is that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. It's doing it your way. It yeah. don't matter if you like blue brown noodles. It don't matter if you like fluffies or new shade or any of those things. I feel like there's a mark for all of it. And that's why we're talking about them today. So, hey, man, whatever everybody's doing, keep doing it. That's the beauty of being an entrepreneur, and that's the beauty of, like, just creating, man. I think people get away from the mm-hmm. idea of, like, this is creation. Yeah, that's you, a fact. Everybody has an opinion on what to create, mm-hmm. but this is somebody's vision that they want to create for the market. And then they have I a think, strong following. I think yeah. people, people tend to think their opinion is factual for everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your opinion could never be fact. That's the opinion that came out of your brain, you know. <laughs> and that what what the the sad part about people is they don't know how to respect other people's opinions. Exactly. You know, I don't care that you want to just create grinches, you want to just create fluffies, and, but I'm just one person. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? At the end of the day, but if we take out that detail out of the game, with people having so much strong opinions mm-hmm. ab- about how Justin think, about how I think, or you think, or whomever, it would be a better place, man. It'll be a, a it'll be a, a real better place. What's the, what's the phrase? If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Yeah, yeah. Same it's, it's that simple, man. Yeah. And I feel like that's that's the only reason why we're all here sitting together today. That's a fact. Because I, I could guarantee you that I can find one subject where none of us agree on it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But we respect it, oh. yeah. and then we'll walk out and we'll be fine. Yeah, we can have a healthy conversations, you know, yeah. You because know, there are some, you know, sometimes I'm on Instagram. There's certain lives, you know, that. You know, you get on there and it's a lot of negativity, and I just gotta. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, I'm not trying to fill my house with that energy right now. Yeah. So this, this core of individuals all got four different mindsets, and none of us are on the same plane when it comes to what you want to create and what you want to do. Right. You know, but the thing is, we're all adults, and we're all individuals that respect mm. one another's opinions. Mm-hmm. So that's what make everything make sense. Mm-hmm. When you throw it out there in the Instagram world, it's oh man, and it's so easy to comment yeah. or, or, t- or talk, um, you know, to talk shit whenever, whenever, whenever you just type it. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure a lot of those people wouldn't say that to those people's faces. Though. Yeah. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Ah, do not, boy. and that's for everybody. Moving do on. Not, do not <laughs> argue with people on social media. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, dumbest yeah. thing in the yeah. world. We, we gonna say that and we gonna move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not <laughs> argue with people on <laughs> social media. With strangers. <laughs> Pull up on them. But anyway, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> No, don't put up on, we do not promote violence. Right. No yeah. violence, we don't do Have it. a healthy conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Learn to have a healthy dialogue. Let dogs talk. Let your productions talk. Right, We're in the so show ring. Let's, okay, man, we, we, we show love to the OGs, and we're going to take it back to the future. And I think uh, I want uh, 
Charles, Mr. V12 Kennels, to name? really, you have your hands in it already, and you probably the only one around this table right here can really give us insight on the future of the nature of the business that we're, we, we're seeing right now. And we're seeing pinks, huskies, koi. I don't, I don't per se have my hand in it. I'm probably the more, in, out of all of us, the, the, the one that's most invested into wanting it. Mm. You know, wanting it and wanting to produce it and things of that nature. Some people are like, why do you want a part of that? What's crazy is I sent my mother a picture, I think it was this picture yesterday, mm. and she said, it looked like an albino. Mm -hmm. said, mm. You know, because the first time I seen it, I didn't say that, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, damn, okay, you're right. But um, me personally, man, I just like new stuff. Mm. I like I like different looks. I'm a, I'm a shoe, I'm a sneaker fanatic, mm -hmm. you know? So when they drop a new Jordan in a different color, I want it. You so know, you want a Frenchie every color? Is that what you say? I take a green one. Somebody got a green one. <laughs> there was one on the news. Yeah, I remember. Yo, it was. It was. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe. We're not gonna miss it at the end. But like, like when you're thinking in terms of like the, the customers, right? Yeah. What appeals to a customer the most is what they're looking at, and a customer that's not trying to get into the breeding mm -hmm. game, mm -hmm. they just like nice stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how could you look at a, a pink dog? You know, like. I, I'm, I was born in 81. I, I seen German Shepherds and Rottweilers running around crazy. Imagine mm -hmm. if you seen a pink Rottweiler, a pink German Shepherd. Yeah, that kind of be kind of well, scary. I'm just anything, saying, like, what's wrong with the it? The point is, anything new, anything new, it, it, it appeals to majority majority of eyes out here. Okay. You know, if my four-year-old daughter see this dog, she'll go crazy. It's a pink dog. You know what mm. I mean? And then the father will want to buy it for their daughter. Mm. You know, just think in the mind of marketing, think in the mind of business. I mean, yeah, people create do brindles all day, every day, been doing it for the last 20, 30 years. But, it, you know, sometimes it's, it's not a bad thing to move on and try something new. Mm. And keep the new market things. fresh. Keep the market fresh. Mm. You know, that's why we got so much other things going on. But for me personally, it's pink. I've stated to this to all of you all in this room. Mm. Over a year ago, yeah. my holy grail is a pink fluffy that actually looks good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't, it's I haven't seen a pink fluffy that doesn't that, that meets my uh, standards, my standards. Would you say uh, what's his name? King Pinky. King Pinky. Does does he meet your standards? Mine personally, because yes. I, I think he's probably the best looking one I've seen so yes. far. He looks fine. He's yeah. one of the he's one of the few. Well, I just seen we just I just seen one maybe one or two days ago. I don't know who made it or whatever, but he's one of the few that actually looks like a French bulldog. Mm. You know that that look like any any French bulldog in somebody's house. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He don't look nuts. Put it like that. He don't look crazy. Yeah. Okay. So he has the he has yeah. the the characteristics that we all love when it comes to look what what you see in the a standard French Frenchie look. Yeah, the the bad ears, yeah, yeah, yeah. the smush the face, smush face yeah. the, the the muscular body. Yeah. He does, he does have that. So I definitely would say that he is, do you think this will be the 2023 craze? I think, I think Pink's a big well, one of them. I think, he, yeah, I think on so. A, on the low, bro, on the low, he's already been the craze. He's been, he's been the craze on the low since probably like May. Mm. All right, when, when people started, when, well, I ain't gonna say people, but when I started hearing that, you know, he's been doing like two breedings a week, three breedings a week, four breedings a week at that high mark financially. Mm. These are just some of those people that don't tell on their business. Mm -hmm. okay. you know? So we we on the outside looking in, unless it's something that you really want to do. You know, I'm the pink fanatic. I don't know about y'all, but he's working. He's going crazy. Okay. So what about, okay, so we got pinks. What's the, what else is the new, what do you guys think that's going to be the trend for 2023? Tell big us about ropes. these new DNAs. Let's talk about it. I would say big ropes. Oh, is that not like, is that not right now? Is that not what everybody's going well, big for ropes right just, now? Just I, think really, it's, I, I think it's accelerating. It's yeah, it's over. accelerating. You know it's what I mean? It's, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a slow start, but, you know, it's the, the, the gas pedal was getting pressed. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to give nobody no ideas, but, <laughs> man, that, that, that pink, fluffy big rope. That's the. It depends on what you win the game for. You win to right. just create. You win to make a gang of money. It just depends on what you win it for. But that pink. Well, first and foremost, I, I hope we all in it for health. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Like, 
Well, I understand at that we're creating, but we still need to be able to be breeding uh, healthy dogs. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, yeah. and these dogs, yeah. their life is, you know, is more important than, you know, I, the, the, I the craze of genetics. I would sure. personally say, though, that pink, the pink big row full fluffy, man. That would be the creme de la creme. You think that would be the creme de la creme for next year? Uh, one that looked good, yes. <laughs> so you predicting, so Charles, you predicting big rope, visual, pink, pink mm. fluffy. Fluffy. You it actually look like a French bulldog. Well, that's do you, a tall bird. Do you think? In a year. All right. <laughs> that, that, I mean, I'm just saying, like, that's a lot of breeding. I'm talking that's like generations. I'm, that's I'm talking it. about the end of next year. So okay. We've already seen, if anybody on social media, I got Instagram accounts, I don't know, but. Diego just posted yesterday a full fluffy, full pink. Just really? yesterday. Okay. We didn't see that. So, <laughs> so like I said, by the end of next year, you'll see it. Mm. They already got big rope huskies. So big rope, is that the right now? Is that the trend right now? Are we talking going into the new year? I would say so. Yeah, definitely. Big rope. So okay, this right here is Capone from our uh, Supreme uh, Supreme uh, Puppies. So shout out to Supreme Puppies Capone. Mm -hmm. so, this is probably one of the first uh, big ropes that I saw mm -hmm. that uh, that I, I seen that has fairly different, uh, fairly good structure. Mm -hmm. um, and he was doing it. He was repping it way before everybody else hopped on it. He was mm -hmm. one of the pioneers that I saw and I watched yeah. push and really set a different tone for like, yo, this is next. Yeah. Everybody yeah. was like, okay, Fluffy and Isabel is right now, but this dude said, I see that. That's cool, yeah. but this is next. And crazy because I seen him doing that, repping that early this year. Yeah. Here we are later in the year, and this is next. Yeah. Do you think he had the code, the cheat code? Nah, I think he had Do the you vision. think he, he, he cracked the code? I think he had the vision. He, he had, had the vision. vision. Mm -hmm. I'll put it like that. He had the vision. Because sometimes you got to have the vision to, to have the foresight to see what's coming. Some people can only see to the tip of their shoe. But then mm -hmm. you have those folks that can see years from now. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what he did. He saw years from now. You know what I mean? This is not the the first big rope I heard of. The first big rope I actually heard of was actually Nitro. Nitro? Nitro was the first one I heard of, too. Yeah, Nitro was the first one Down I heard of. Florida, really? Yes. In Miami. Who, uh, yeah. who owns Nitro? I think Mike, Nitro's in um in Tampa, if I'm not mistaken. You know who owns it? Yeah, it's in my DM. Okay. Hey, shout out to Nitro. Um, would you say he's one of the? You say he's one of the top. God, dogs? Yes, I, I would definitely say uh, if I'm gonna do a, uh, a honorable mention, yes, because you know there's a, a lot of big roasts that I've been seeing that actually are spawns off of Nitro and have Nitro in his pedigree. Okay, and so okay. yeah, I would definitely say Nitro. And he's it, um, you know, and just coming out of that pedigree, you know, I've seen like a, a new gene as far as the curly. Okay. Right. Well, you, I think we've mentioned a lot of great dogs. I think um, a lot of people that are watching will agree definitely with the dogs that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but we do want to go ahead and start wrapping it up. And I think before we wrap it up, we do have to mention that one dog that I think we all agreed upon that was was killing it. Do you, do you agree, Joe, or what's up? Uh, <laughs> me, me and my buddy, uh, Simon Says, we, mm -hmm. we, we went back and forth on it. And uh, he, called it a, he called it an eight ball. Yep. And the reason he called it an eight ball because this dog right here that we're about to say, this dog has it all. He's visually fluffy. He carries the testable. Mm -hmm. He has the production. He has the influence behind one of the biggest programs out right now in our market, Envious Frenchies, Texas Elite, mm -hmm. King Kong. He has a lot of controversy around his name, but we all can agree that this dog has set the tone for our community as far as like what we're talking about today. I meaning yeah. the look, That's a fact. the DNA, everything, and the production to speak for itself where he has offsprings doing what he's doing. So we're going to give it to him. Everybody give a clap up. <laughs> King Kong, you are eight ball. So, hey, shout out to you. You are that dog for the year, the 2020. Shout out Envious Frenchies, uh, Texas Elite, you know, the owners of King Kong. You know what I mean? He's just that, that dog, you know what I mean? Um... His sons, man, what are we talking? Primetime? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's the other one? Primetime, Champagne <sighs> Poppy. Uh, lamb hey. Chop? Is lamb, lamb, lamb Chop. chop. That's what uh, I mean. Gold uh, Mine or Gold Dust? No. Dexter. A visual Isabella oh Carrier. Gold Mine, yeah. yeah. Mur. Yeah. So he has a lot of offspring. So a lot of offspring. We, we can't name them all, but yeah, we, right. we just wanted to give him that uh, that spotlight and highlight. He is so he is our eight ball yeah. uh, for the year. 
Uh, so, hey, shout out to King Kong in his franchise, Texas League. King Kong is our eight ball for this year, uh, in a year recap. So, um, definitely, man, I want to say this to everybody today. Shout out y'all for coming out, uh, sitting out with me, talking about dogs. Uh, I know it's early. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I just wanted to say that to you guys. Yeah, no, it was definitely an honor to be invited here. Um, great group of guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Make sure you leave your comments, subscribe. Look us all up on social media. Um, we did say our names at the beginning, so just go, go ahead and look it up. Follow all of us. All these guys are A1 readers. I recommend every single one of the programs if you want to purchase a puppy or whatever. But, yes. So, again, yeah, thank you. You guys want to say anything else before we're good? I think we're we're all good, happy, and content with everything that we did. Yeah, and um, this was the end of the year recap. Thanks for having me. See you next year. September 9th. Willie Mansion. You know he won't plug that. You know Charles. Be there or be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Let's go.